makes a chain from the old one. Yeah, it hasn't been raised to the ground. Well, I think it looks like a gigantic lavatory. Oh, come on. <laughs> Look, it's got the letterbox. That's going to come in really useful. What for? Uh, looking out of when people knock. Well, it's nice to have a front door. We had a front door in the last house. Yes, Vivian, but it was nailed to the ceiling in the living room. <laughs> it had to be done. Yeah, I had to. I was drunk. But just give me the key. Now watch this very closely. Right. You see? Oh, I used to be a cat burglar, you know. Oh, could you be... I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got a Swiss bank account with 2,000 bloody cats in it. Come on. Oh, good boy. Uh... More bloody students. Oh, shut up and put some clothes on. Well, wow, look at all these letters. I thought Mr. Belofsky said the last lot only moved out yesterday. Yeah, they did. They were illiterate. But they were philosophy students. So? Oh. Anyway, they're probably Bill's. Who's Bill? <laughs> Vivian, this is my bedroom. Oh, yeah? Yes, I was here first. You got any witnesses? Look, I don't need witnesses. Just get off my property! No! Get out! <laughs> Look, this must be my bedroom. All my clothes are here. <laughs> no, they're not, Vivian. <laughs> Oh, I didn't have the bedroom. Uh, I don't want it. It's not mine. Yes, it is. Uh, no, it isn't. You said it was yours just now. <laughs> so did you. No, I didn't. Did it! 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 Neil, your bedroom's on fire. <laughs> this was my bedroom. Oh, no. <laughs> Caption. Thank you. That's right. You know, son, I just love your English beetles. Mind you, after 20 years of the suckers, I ain't got much choice. I thought you were dead. A lot of folks did, but it ain't harm a career any. No, 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 no. Uh, you got any new material? Well, it just so happens I've been writing a song up here. It's all uh, kind of concerning my diet. It's called... Cuckoo Daddy Longlegs, you want to hear it? Oh, yeah. Right now? Well, there's no point hanging around. Sit 
Saturday night, hanging round for a fight. Spot a real beauty with a dust in my blue. Like there's records and tapes, <laughs> videos, overseas sales, cable TV. 60% McCartney, 40% me. There's got to be 25 million in this. Rain fly pie with a mosquito side salad. 23 years on a meat free diet. Beatles, crickets, gonna get you sick. Here's a little sucker in you ought to try it. Cookies, daddy long legs. Don't get much more money than Peggy <laughs> well, I'll probably get a few quid on the guitar. <laughs> Lucky the guys told me my bedroom was on fire. I might have gone to sleep and burned to death. <laughs> Not that I ever sleep much anyway, because I have to spend most of my time in the kitchen having a really bad time. Hello, kitchen. Hello, hello. My name's Neil. But don't bother remembering it, because I'll probably soon be dead anyway. Great. The only thing left in the cupboard is the teapot. And that's filthy. Thanks a lot, Mr. Bolovsky. Thanks for giving us the oldest, dirtiest teapot in the world. Oh, wow. Just look at all this mess. You know, I, I wish just once, just once, this wouldn't happen to me, you know? Oh, yeah. Very zen. Hi, Neil. Is this some sort of sick joke? Why isn't supper ready? You haven't done a bloody thing, have you, Neil? Oh, well, I'm sorry, Vivian, but considering that none of you helped me unpack or do anything at all, and considering I'm not even feeling very well today, actually, no, it's not ready. I haven't got six pairs of hands, you know. I wish I had, but I haven't. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, yeah. I've got six pairs of hands, Billy. Look, look, it's amazing. Neil, where's that emergency tin of spaghetti hoops we brought? Rick, Rick. You're going to freak, you're going to freak, man. You haven't even made the tea, Neil. Neil? Brilliant, brilliant. I suppose I have to make my own bloody tea. Rick, come and look, Rick. Come and look at this. You're going to freak. I've got six pairs of hands. I'm Krishna. Dear, oh dear. You'd do anything to try and impress me, wouldn't you, Neil? Where's Vivian? Vivian! Ah, there you are, Vivian. Do you think I could have a word with you? No. It's just a, just a little piece of information, really. Uh, why did you throw the toilet out of the window? <laughs> to lower the rent. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Stupid of me. Uh, just one other thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, now we can go to the rent tribunal. You don't have to pay as much for a house with an outside lavvy. Really? <laughs> really? Well, I don't believe you. I think you did it on purpose because you know I've got a runny bottom. <laughs> Gonna make the supper or not? Well, I think you better ask him that, hadn't you? I'm a bit more interested in my bottom at the moment. <laughs> Neil! Neil! Let's not beat about the bush. Are you gonna make supper or am I gonna kick your teeth in? <laughs> Where are you going with that sack, Mike? Nowhere. Is that a bag of dirty washing? No. I thought we were supposed to take everyone's washing when we go to the laundrette. What about the people's charter we drew up? <laughs> right. Laundry. Right. None of the guys, right, no matter what, like not even if they've been eaten by wild dogs... Hey! Hey, that's my claws! ...shall go to the laundrette without first collecting all the other guys' dirty gear. Yeah, claws 83. Oh. Except for Mike. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Anyway, I'm not going to the laundrette, I'm going to the cellar. 
I've got a stiff. Know what I mean? <laughs> oh, well, that's uh, fair enough then, I suppose. <laughs> he gets worse by the minute. Well, at least he's not doing the washing. Right, right Neil. I'm going to give you three seconds to make supper. Starting now! Three seconds. <laughs> One! <laughs> Two! What do you fancy, Boo? Three! Where's my supper? Uh, well, it's not quite finished yet, actually. You know, it's not ready. <laughs> well, that's right, Neil, yes! Lounge around, have a good time, while we starve to death, beat Nick! <laughs> have you broken my favourite plate? Come on. Suppose we should just have to cook our own supper. What was that? What? Nothing. And my mind's beginning to play tricks with me. I, I thought we were lying on a raft just now. You should take it easy, you know. You must be working too hard. Bloody hot, isn't it? It is. I should get a lower wattage bulb. <laughs> Help! We're sinking! We're sinking! Oh, relax. We're not sinking. We're not sinking. I'll get some fresh air in here. Uh, What's the matter? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, can you swim at all? <laughs> what? Uh, well, I was just wondering. Wondering? Yes, I was wondering if you might swim to the chemist and get me something for my hallucinations. What? Have you had one too? Uh, either that, or the whole town is flooded. <laughs> You're right. You know, we've been working too hard. I haven't had a holiday for over a year now. Well, what about this? <laughs> you! What? This? A holiday? Two weeks in a cellar under a light bulb? <laughs> well, it was all I could get. All you could get. Do me a favour. What? Check and see if that really was an hallucination outside. How did you get here? You'd have to ask my parents. They wouldn't tell me. <laughs> Would you mind looking after my buddy? <laughs> All right, so it was a bad joke. But then death isn't funny. This is revolting. You know, it is amazing what you can come up with with just flour and water. <laughs> yeah, glue. <laughs> what is that little white dot? It's a little white dot. Oh, very clever. Must be really old telly. What, hippie? Look, it's a sign, that little white dot. It means something really heavy. It means there's no more telly. It's time to go to bed. I'm going upstairs now to finish painting my astrological star chart, all right? Do you really think anyone has ever been in the slightest bit interested in anything you ever say or do ever, Neil? <laughs> Fascist. <laughs> uh. You going to bed, Vivian? No. I'm going to watch the doc for a bit longer. <laughs> Wish we had a video, then I could watch it in the morning. <laughs>
Oh, well. Nighty night. And don't forget to unplug your set. Why? Because it'll blow up, you silly boy. <laughs> what? It's never going to blow up. I think I'll play murder in the dark. <laughs> I could have made a fortune if I turned pro. But for me, it's the sport that matters. Hey, Neil, can you throw my ball back, OK? Oh. OK. How's that? Neil's <laughs> oh. oh. been using my toothpaste! He was typing out an essay. He used it as tipex. What are you doing standing outside my bedroom then, Mike? Well, there's only the floor to sit on, Rick. Oh, ha ha, very funny. I suppose you think it's very clever to laugh with three million people on the dole. Yeah. <laughs> Look, can you just get out of the way, please? I want to get into my bedroom. Uh, uh, you're not exactly dressed for it. What? Well, all right, all right. I won't stand on convention. He never stood on me. That'll be a fiver for the room, not the gag. Five pounds to get into my own bedroom? Ha! What have you done? Turn it into a roller disco? Uncanny. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry to be a party pooper. It's just that I'd like to get undressed now. I mean, look, man. Either stretch your stuff or bug off. All right. All right. This is it. Everybody listen to me. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> Sorry, Governor. Apples and pears, tit for tat, I love London town, and I was at Violence Funeral. But this little Herbert, this little Herbert, has been bothering the gentleman and the young ladies whilst they were shaking their booties down to the ground. Know what I mean? Gentle as you can, slobber. I don't want the punters getting upset. Mike, you bastard! <laughs> Next time, throw the paper out as well, Vivian. Neil, help! Uh, no, I can't, Rika. Because now is the time for me to finish painting my astrological chart. That'll do, Slubber. That'll do. <sighs> I'm sorry, Rick. I mean, if I was to make any exception, who would respect me then, would you? Yes, well, I'm going to call the pigs, actually. Let's see what the pigs have to say. Oh, wise up, Rick. Look, this world is like a burnt steak. Small, tough, and the chips are always stacked against it. <laughs> Oh, you're always so pleased with yourself, aren't you, Mike? You always think you're so bloody clever. Yeah. I've arranged for you to share Neil's bedroom. What? I'm not sharing a bedroom with that rubber, Johnny. <laughs> All right, Neil, shut up. Before you say anything, I've just tossed a coin for who gets the bed, and you lost. It's completely fair, and if you don't believe me, ask Mike, so shut up. Oh, uh, OK, Rick. <laughs> what? What? What did you just say? What? You just called me a bastard, didn't you? <laughs> but you better not, Neil. Because let me tell you, me and Mike and Vivian are getting pretty sick of you. It's here. Why are your sheets all sticky? Oh, it's probably just the red paint. But... Ah! <laughs> OK, Neil. It may seem heavy-handed for £1.50, but when I lend somebody money, I expect to get it back. Do you know what I mean? I'm stuck on! I'm going to be rich! in the cellar. Vivian, for heaven's sake! Easy, 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 easy. Spill the beans, Vivian, and I don't mean on a toast. Well, it's very simple. I was playing murder in the dark in the cellar, and I was getting really bored. So I thought, why not? I'll crack the floor with my head. And when I did, this huge smell of oil came out. Now, listen, this could be very big, and I mean family size. Tonight, we sleep on it. What? All four on one spurt? Listen, they're going to be rich. House meeting tomorrow morning, nine o'clock in the broom cupboard. Oh, and Neil, I want that £1.50 by Wednesday, otherwise another moose dies. <laughs> Oh dear me, Mum. I know our job is to serve the young gentleman and look after them as best we can. 
But I'm sure young Master Neil do treat us very rough sometime. And so he should, young Lucy, for we love it. The complete negation of our personality, the mind-numbing servility in the 18-hour day, and we expect no reward but a staircase over our heads. Oh, dear, yes, Lucy. We love it. For personal abuse is our lot, and the further back you go, the better it was. Now, now, everyone. The masters are coming below stairs to beat us, not as a peek out of you. Best behaviour, or you'll have me to answer to. <laughs> it does seem very strange that Mike should call a house meeting in here. I mean, I've never been in here before. That's because this is where we keep the cleaning stuff, Rick. No, it's not, Neil. It's because we only moved in here yesterday. Actually, I'm surprised that anyone except me knows this place even exists. Because although to you lot, I seem to have about as much importance as, um, uh, as, um... Hippie. A hippie. <laughs> it does happen to be me that does all the cleaning round here. Moan, 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 balling, just because you do a little bit of housework. <laughs> what, a little bit? All right. All right, house meeting, OK? This is house... a house meeting, Neil. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it? <laughs> well, then Vivian, then. Then Zeke. We're only here one time because you kept me awake all night, pacing up and down and ringing bells. Listen, man, sleep gives you cancer. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Listen, Neil. Do you know the difference between you and some number twos? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh, stop crying. I'm not crying, Rick. I've got some dust in my sinuses. Well, that'll teach you to stop skiving on the cleaning then, won't it? Oh, no. What? Uh, I'm going to sneeze, Rick. Neil, uh, no. I am, I am. I always no. do. No. I do. Uh, uh, uh! on the floor. <laughs> Silence! Silence! Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. I'm glad you could all make it, because if you hadn't done, you wouldn't be here. Wouldn't be here. <laughs> now, what were you doing in the broom cupboard? Good question! Uh, oh, yeah. Um, we were having a house meeting, actually, yeah. Impossible. Impossible! <laughs> because Colonel Vivian and myself held a house meeting a quarter of an hour ago upstairs. And I'm afraid to say that under the new regulations, non-attendance at house meetings is punishable by death. Ha, 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 death. <laughs> I would like to overlook this, but unfortunately, you do seem to be responsible for certain other criminal activity. Ha, ha. Namely, loitering with intent. Good one. Conspiring in the broom cupboard. Brilliant. And damaging police equipment. <laughs> However, I, El Presidente... Viva El Presidente! I'm prepared to offer a free amnesty if you behave like good citizens and go down to the oil fields in the cellar and dig up all the oil. You fascist hunter! <laughs> Look, you do want to be incredibly rich, don't you? Well, um, well yes. But why can't you go down to the oil cellars and dig as well? Oh, that is fab, Rick. That is fab. Fab! So when I pop along to see the Saudis, what do I say, eh? Hello, King Fowl. I've got some oil for you. In fact, I've got a sample of it here all over my shirt. You wouldn't have to have a tin of swore figure about the palace, your royal mightiness. Wise up, Ricky. Chop my hands off. Shh! Don't say that about the Arabs, Mike. You'll get us all into terrible trouble. Your magnificence, the British Foreign Secretary have arrived to offer his apology for recent press criticism of our alleged mandatory cruelty. I will see him now. Which bit of him would you like to see first? <laughs> Get on with it, Rick, you big pot! I'm getting...
sorry, Viv. <laughs> That's okay now. It was bound to happen sooner or later. You're all right, Vivian. <laughs> Vivian? Great! This is it! I've been waiting two hours for this! It's a revolution! <laughs> what do you mean, revolution? Revolution! Blood runs! Flags wave! Come on, everybody! Throw down your tools and throw up a barricade! Come on! Run into the Winter Palace! Run into the Winter Palace and stand on the tables, waving bits of paper at each other! Yes! Yes! yes. Hello, are you the Tsar? Yes, I am, actually! Blam! Blam! Ah, tough luck, fascist! That's what happens to people who aren't working class! Yes, yes, deal, deal. Listen, I've got everything ready. In ten minutes' time, there's going to be a massive rock and roll benefit in, in the drawing room, right? And right at the climax, the oppressed working classes of this house, right, that's you, mainly, Ooh, great, right, yes, yes. will rise up and seize control of the state. Huh? Brilliant! Revolution! Revolution! Watch out, Norman Tennant! Come on! <laughs> I wish they wouldn't keep doing that! It's passage of time, Rick. <laughs> Who are you? I'm coming in here to watch Postman Pat. <laughs> uh, this is the band Radical Posture, and uh, my name's Alexei, Yuri Gagarin, Siege of Stalingrad, Glorious Five Year Plan, Sputnik Tractor, Moscow Dynamo, Back Four, Bolovsky. <laughs> My dad was a bit of a communist, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> Do you know you're the spitting image of our landlord, Jersey? Yeah, he's, uh, he's my uncle, actually, you know. That's incredible, that. You're as like as two peas. I hate that expression. It's so patronising. Yes. It's just the sort of vegetablist comment you'd expect from a repressive dictator. Well, this is it. The massive rock and roll benefit for the oppressed workers of the hat. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hi, Mike. Um, what are you doing here? Never mind what I'm doing here. Who are they? Blimey. Um, <laughs> search me, but perhaps they're friends of somebody who's just popped in to, I don't know, play a rehearsal or something. <laughs> uh, would you like to go upstairs and lie down in your room? I think I'd better. <laughs> Great. Hi, Spotnik. <laughs> or can I call you Comrade? <laughs> now, you know the plan, don't you? Right at the peak of the gig, okay, you incite the masses to rise and we burn the rice stag. Well, we burn Mike's room anyway. <laughs> and then, hey presto, revolution! Stuff the revolution, where's my 200 quid? Uh, yeah, well, I'd better go sell some tickets, hadn't I? <laughs> <laughs> tickets! Anybody? Probably stuck in a queue or something. <laughs> Neil, did you actually pay to get to get in? Uh, no, I'm the oppressed workers of the house, remember? Well, yes, I know, but this is a benefit gig, you know. Uh, the tickets are 200 pounds each. 200 pounds? That's yeah. nearly a term's grant, man. Look, Neil, this benefit is for you. It's in aid of you, to help you. And you won't even pay for it. God, how self-centred can you get? Come on, 200 pounds. I've only got 50p. Well, that'll have to do. Well, he better be good, this Norman Tebby. <laughs> Woo! Okay, yeah. Hey, it's really great to be here at this benefit, actually. Woo! Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling really kind of... Woo! Okay, yeah. Hey, you're feeling okay. Woo! Yeah, all right. Yeah. Woo! All right, yeah. <laughs> this is really funky. It's like one big kind of empty room here. Yeah. Woo! All right, okay. We're actually going to do a number now. There was a song in the charts recently about racial harmony, um, about black and white people living together side by side in perfect racial harmony together on pianos. <laughs> um, I, I might be a bit stupid like, you know what I mean? But um, I know the pianos aren't going to solve nothing, you know what I mean? No. There's only one thing that unites us, one thing that we all have in common. What is it? What is that one thing that unites us? 
It's not class or ideology, colour, creed or roots. The only thing that unites us is Dr. Martin's boots. And Dr. Martin gave food to the world so that everybody could be free. They're classless, matchless, he was just one food from retail for only £19.99p. Pretty soon everybody be wearing those boots with the airflow cells. And your boots will have a meeting and your boots will take control. Thanks to Dr. Martin, everybody moved to one beat. Thanks to Dr. Martin, they'll be dancing in the street. No, don't you want me? OK, Boots, do your stuff! Dr. Martin's boot. Dr. Martin's, Dr. Martin's, Dr. Martin's boot. Dr. Martin's, Dr. Martin's, Dr. Martin's boot. It's poor me. Don't you ask me to never read the NME? What happened to the revolution? God, you think devil woman had never been written? <laughs> what are you two doing here? You should be down in the cellar digging for oil. I hope you realise that all this loafing around has cost us one day of being incredibly rich. What? Goodness, is that the time? By the way, there was a complete lie about the oil.